Right, this is Times Radio Breakfast 9.14. We're going to discuss uh, all the morning stories with two new, the very latest Times radios, uh, radio signings presenters, Jane Garvey and Fee Glover. Morning to you both. Very good morning, Asma. Hello, Hello, Asma. How weird is this? Quite weird. Get used to it. <laughs> on a scale new, of one to ten. Normal. On a scale of one to ten, Jane, how weird is this? Okay, I'm glad we're going to determine which one's which to start with. I'm Jane. <laughs> Fee's fee, fee, yeah. yeah. Uh, but we're still going out and about and still being Answer the question. misrepresented <laughs> about which one's which. So I just want to say, I'm the one with this voice and she's the one with... Hang on, who does that? That voice. Who does Not that? Not you, darling. No, no, other people. Do you stand in order like no. Anton Deck No, we've been asked that before. <laughs> no, we don't. don't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was something original. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Quite well, often. Just making small talk. <laughs> Well, so Jane doesn't do small talk. No, we set a very high standard early on. It's yeah. good to see, actually. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, you. listen, you can join in at home. Uh, you can text 8772. <laughs> yeah. You may not want to. Yeah. Yeah. Start your message with the word times or help. Uh, you can tweet the hashtag is times radio or email studio at times.radio. OK, we are going to talk about Nadine Doris. Front page of the Times, U-turn or face election wipeout, Trust warned. And it's Nadine Doris. She's the latest to publicly criticise Liz Truss's policies warning that if she doesn't roll back her plans, she risks losing the next election to Labour. Um, Jane Garvey, does mm. it... Ma- don't laugh at me. <laughs> does it matter? I'm smiling. No, OK. Does it matter that it's Nadine Dorries or is it just, you know, yet another uh, another attack? Yeah, this is Nadine Dorries, the worker's friend. Um, she's reinterpreted herself um, recently. And, of course, she was, as, as far as I understand, she was a backer of Liz Truss. She was. I know she was a big, big fan, and that's not an exaggeration of... Uh, Liz Truss's predecessor, but she attached herself to Liz Truss. So it's a bit odd Mm. that she's already appearing to step away, but she has got a bit of form. It was Nadine, wasn't it, who criticised George Osborne and David Cameron as posh boys who... Didn't know, was it didn't know the price of milk or didn't know the price of mm. a loaf. Mm. And so she isn't unused to mm. saying some mm-hmm. things that perhaps do need to be said. Some people might say perhaps people who wouldn't normally back Nadine yeah. are rather glad that she has said this, actually. Yeah. Um, what do you think, though? Because her central point is, it's an electoral point, actually. She is saying that if the Tory party lurches to the right, I think she was talking about benefits, obviously, potentially not being uprated in line with inflation. The Conservative Party lurched to the right... And they, they leave the set the centre ground or the middle ground for Labour, who are already 33 points ahead of the, the Tories in, in, the, in the polls. So is she making a, actually a very sound electoral point for the Conservatives? Well, I think there's, there are so many problems going on at the moment for the Tory party, aren't there? I mean, not least, journalists are hoovering the carpet to find crumbs of criticism. So every single person who says something is going to have that point of view really amplified. So I think that's a huge problem. And also... Um, just, I mean, on the electoral point, the, the phrase growth, 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 I think if you take the previous interview that you did with the Royal College of Nurses, when it comes down to people's individual stories about what they want for their lives at the moment in this time of hardship, mm-hmm. that great big slogan of growth, growth, growth means nothing. You know, you've got two very, very divided things going on. Mm. So. Uh, whatever Nadine Doris says at the moment, whether it's an incredibly harsh criticism or even a minor criticism, it goes into a very, very fertile gap between Mm. those two things. Mm. Yeah, I was doing my weekly shop yesterday while Liz Truss was doing her speech. And at the checkout, um, the lady who was serving me, uh, and of course the vanishing number of people actually serve you in supermarkets. And by the way, that's something I really want to get off my heaving bosom. You can do do that on Monday as well. Okay, well, I do know. Well, I just don't like self. I, I want to be served by Do somebody. You? I want to have a chat with the yeah. lady or yeah. the man oh, on the checkout. I'm, right. I'm the exact opposite. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, you're wrong <laughs> and I'm right. Anyway, she said to me, she, en- a trail. <laughs> she engaged me in conversation about the cost of living yeah. and about the price of stuff. And as she was talking, my butter went through and it was an astonishing four quid for a 500 was it Lurpak? It may have been. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't. Um, I do like butter. Uh, but that is an illustration yeah. of where we're really all at. You know, even those of us who are very fortunate, I, I defy anyone at the moment not to think about it before they turn their heating on or even switch a light on. Yeah. And that's what most of us are consumed with at the moment. Yeah. And I don't think the lady on the checkout or indeed anyone in my real life is obsessed with the idea of growth. No. Is the problem that... Um, that Liz Truss is talking about growth and people can't, you know, afford, the, you know, basics. Um, and also she she seems to be, it's almost like her, her ideas and her, her speeches were written a long time ago and they don't, she's not reading the room. 
she's talking about um, important stuff like I want to feel safe as a woman walking down the street. Uh, when I went on a, a flight, I was given a, a air hostess badge and, and my brother was given a pilot badge. This is all it kind of it's not important. It, well, it's, it's interesting stuff, but it's not she's not gripping the mood at all. And it just feels like there are two parallel universes right now. And I wonder what you think about that. Well, I think, uh, I mean, there were lots of criticisms yesterday, weren't there, that there was something about that speech that was a little bit year six, I want to be head of school. You know, all, all of the things that you imagine would be said by somebody who is wanting to lead a healthy country uh, were tick, 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 mm. tick all the way down without this kind of enormous, this is new, focus on the new. So yeah. I think that is... Quite problematic. It would be interesting, wouldn't it? I think if you did a survey, maybe in the supermarket that Jane was in yesterday in a week's time and asked people what was in that speech. Yeah. I mean, apart from the repetition of three words, I'm not sure that many people would be able to tell you that much. Really. When, when was the golden age of political oratory at ne a conference? What's never. your, your favourite speech, Never, never. I mean, we, we actually asked that yesterday. I think the Kinnock 85 one is the one that people often remember. Oh, yeah, and yeah. there's the Blair one. Uh, the Thatcher not you turning one, but they've never been any good. Because I think they write it. Aisha Hazarika was saying there's not good. There were no good clap lines in Liz Truss's speech. Well, she but, can't deliver a. a I've, I didn't know it was a clap line. No, yeah, but I think clap lines themselves are kind of naff, aren't they? Because, Especially the way they pause for the, the clap. The, oh, pause for the, the way they sort of build artificially towards yeah. it. So I, I, I don't. <laughs> 